On the breakfast, the spate of migration among Nigerians has been on the increase in recent times with several sectors of the economy losing manpower. Today, we we'll look at how the jackpot trend has affected the banking sector in Nigeria. Also on the breakfast, Nigeria's federal government has inaugurated a special investigative panel to probe alleged cases of human rights violation and counterinsurgency in the northeast. To what extent have atrocities been committed and what are the prospects for justice for the victims? Stay tuned for a conversation on this. And in Off the Press, we'll bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a very beautiful morning right here. It's a Wednesday morning, by the way. I hope you're doing very great. Um, well, fortunately, I can't get an answer, but I just want to believe that you're doing well and everything is going to be all right, okay? Uh, we're back with the breakfast. The lineup this morning is quite interesting and we ask that you sit back, relax and have a great time. We will start off as always our top trending conversation. But just before then, I am Messi Ibuko. Now, top trending for us this morning is uh, the first we look at is what Nigerians have been talking about. Uh, we have a video uh, to that particular effect where you have some staff of a popular Nigerian bank uh, supported escaping from the bank's premise through the fence in an attempt to avoid, you know, the wrath of disgruntled customers and for safety. Very frightened uh, staff were captured in this, in their numbers, killing the fence uh, with the help of a ladder. I mean, it's really, really uh, something you need to look at if you haven't seen that already. And this happened during closing hours. Let's quickly take a look at this video. We'll be right back. What are they? And they need to be here. No, you get them up for crossing, they don't come. Mopo, now we'll go to cross. They are up, soldiers, they don't come. 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 No, now we're going to see dinner. Oh, yeah, now go now. Make one of them fast. This kind of thing has to be fast. Okay. You don't need to be slow, 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 fast, fast. They're not for your entire. Relax, just they do what you they do. They can't go in. The major thing is for us to go through that place. Go, go. Just go gently. See, there's no time. Just go, 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 go. You are safe. Just go gently. Eh? Eh, hey, hold on. There are no cause for us. Maybe they they look now. Who cares? They don't see person. But they see now. They don't pass anything. Just go in. Where? go, 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 go. No, we feel carry, we gonna carry, gonna carry this thing. We feel even carry something. Say, gently, Neka. Neka, gently. Neka, here, you'd have given her the bag. Yeah, you try, sir. Careful. Where the Delta off? Yeah. Carry that thing, eh? How you want to turn them upside down, Abi? Wait, turn the thing. They can't come in. Bona fast. Then they there now. Well, uh, you are actually seeing that particular video very unfortunate, and I don't think anyone should go through that, right? Uh, we understand the times that we're faced with. I mean, we understand what's going on. But you want to begin to ask yourself, this staff, are they really responsible 
uh, for what's going on, the scarcity of the note in some extent. And don't forget that you have, for every organization, I mean, there's management. How, how much of these decisions uh, do they have to take? I mean, really. But I also think that there are better ways, you know, to express ourselves and trying to, you know, threaten people's life. Well, that's, that's a lot of fear. Uh, the reason why these persons have to escape, not through the front door, uh, through the back door, it's because they are frightened, they are scared. And uh, if you look at the reports across different parts of the world, then, you know, different parts of the country to be precise, it's nothing to write them about. And that's the reason for it. But I think that we should, you know, be very considerate as much as we feel frustrated uh with the appropriate channels you know to um, lodge our complaints express how we feel rather than taking the laws into our hands because uh, that's not the case i mean look at that there's also security what what's even the guarantee that those who are trying to scale the fence would not you know sustain one injury or the other i mean look at that lady who's trying to scale the fence uh, she's not even wearing anything very uh you know uh, sporty, that would be the word. Uh, what if, you know, they break their leg and something happens? I know some people say they deserve what's going on because uh, there's several allegations as to people hoarding funds. Uh, the bankers are responsible for what we're going through. But I'm saying that two wrongs can never make a right. And I think that we need to do better. We need to understand that these persons are our brothers, they are our sisters, they are our uncles, they are our friends and our cousins. And we have to find a better way, you know, to express ourselves. Because when it developed and, you know, when a civil uh, dispensation for civil persons and so we'll find a civil way within a democratic dispensation to express how we feel quite unfortunate uh, I've seen def different reactions mostly a lot of people think that hey they deserve what they are going through right now and I mean they're responsible for that but hey to what extent do they contribute to uh, the decisions that are taken at the various banks that they work I mean how much of influence do they have or are they just taking orders and acting according to what's been put out there? Well, I understand, you know, the grievances of Nigerians. I mean, you can't tell anybody otherwise, especially when you have money and you need to take your money and you can't take your money. It's very frustrating. Or probably maybe you're trying to have some, uh, because we've seen several complaints, not just about wanting to take money. People are complaining of their, you know, uh, funds being missed in the account some people are talking about debits and they try to go to the bank to rectify all of that that becomes a problem but i'm saying the two wrongs can never make a right we'll have to find a way uh you know very civil to solve the problem okay hopefully the relevant authorities will step into the situation and look at all of this and ensure that you know peace and calm returns uh, to every part of the country and to the banking sector it's it's very unfortunate now, our next conversation is also about the banks and you know the narrow note so we talk about the fact that uh, there's a lagos i mean the lagos a certain bank has been called out for uh purportedly giving bulk cash to some special customers while others were crying and waiting uh, with empty pockets let's quickly take a look at this uh, you know clip and we'll return to talk some more this is access bank at ifako and while a lot of customers are standing outside to have access to the ATM, the security guards locked the compound, the access to the ATM, took some people inside, collected their ATM cards, and have been giving them money in bulk. Here they are. Look at the people. Those are the people they allow in. Those are the people they allow. They allow these people in to give them bulk. They give them access to bulk cash. While their customers are out there, Restricted from having access to the ATM. This is GT Bank, Atifako, opposite Zenith Bank, Access Bank, sorry, Access Bank, opposite Tifako. All right, so uh, I'm sure you're just wondering, just like every other person, I mean, we thought it was a certain bank, and now uh, you're calling a different bank. But uh, the spur of the moment, adrenaline, all of that can be responsible uh, for the mix up in the conversation. But let's get back to the system. We constantly talk about uh, the fact that, oh, I mean, for this, at this particular instance or stance, there's a lot of blame on the CBN. I mean, a lot of persons are blaming uh, Godwin and Mephili for all of the hardship that we're faced with. This policy was not properly thought out. But let's even say that funds have been released. Let's not forget that this system does not operate itself. Right. Uh, the system is not... Uh, a system that you wake up and say, hey, this system works independently of itself. This system is manned by humans. And that's what exactly uh, what we're faced with. 
Well, you see the issue of favoritism. It's been in our space for a very long time. And all the persons who say it's only those who can afford it that can be there. I, I, I had a conversation on phone uh, last night with someone and, and, and she was saying, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to be taking a work to a certain bank where you know, someone has kept cash for me. And that's what it is. But we can't continue like this and expect a different society. We can continue like this and not respect the laws. We have systems. Well, these systems will not operate themselves. These systems will not be operated, you know, by spirit. The humans operate them. And if we don't respect the structures and the system and act in accordance with the law, then we can't expect anything different. And so that's what happens. So you find, you know, you walk into a banking space and whoever it is that you are, you can't be on the queue. And that's because you want a special treatment. And those who are, you know, on the queue would have to wait and then you will be attended to. We see this behavior every other time. So, I mean, one would not be and should not be surprised if that's the case, just like uh, that uh, report was generated as a user, um, you know, videos was generated right there, right? So I, I don't think anyone should be surprised. It's something that we see. We see that in the banks, in banking sector. We see that in the airports. Uh, whoever has the means, I mean, as much as you're influential, I mean, people tend to pay uh, attention. So it's like you give preference to a certain group of persons. They don't queue. They're just, you know, walking and then they feel like uh, they should be attended to. It, it doesn't make sense. Now, these are the things, practices, behavior that contributes to uh, destroying our country. <laughs> you, you know, we probably have to always think about, yes, it's the president, it's the governor, it's my lawmaker, it's the chairman. Well, we have to look inwards because a corrupt society would always throw up corrupt leaders. We are just a reflection of our, I mean, who we are. So the leaders that we are, we're just reflecting who they are. So the kind of leaders that we have, it's almost who we are. So if you say we have corrupt leaders, if you say we have leaders that are inhuman, if you say we have leaders that are um, tribalistic, if you say we have leaders that are, uh, I'm looking for the words now to begin to describe them, some of this adjective, I'm saying that that's exactly who we are. We are very tribalistic. We're very corrupt. We, you know, engage in the, the act of favoritism. We do all sorts of things. And this is exactly what we accuse those who are the hem of affairs. We accuse the president. We accuse our governors, the councillor, chairman of different local governments. But we, we can't, I mean, you can't be pointing that finger and you are not, you're acting the same. We're all on this table. We can only do better, like I say. The election's going to come, 25th of February. Nigerians will go out. You will cast your vote. But even if you definitely have to cast your vote for Jesus, you know, and he then becomes the president, what happens to the people that he will be working with? What happens to your attitude, your behavior, your orientation, the kind of values that you hold? There's no respect for law. You, you treat one other person and what, what, so it's a lot. At the end of the day, I mean, there's this street patterns that says, now man, they do man, now we they do ourselves. That's basically what we're going through at this point in time. And this is, this is a call to everyone, to Nigerians, that the only way we can get better is that in your different sphere of influence, that you do the right thing. Imagine that we all do the right thing wherever it is that we are. You're driving, you respect the traffic rules and the laws, and you don't beat the traffic. You don't beat the traffic. You, I mean, you just go about. Would have a saner climb. You don't trash things indiscriminately. I mean, just walk on the road and toss things around. We're going to have a better society. And that someone comes, you know, whoever it is that they are, they should respect the order. Someone is on the queue, and then you don't respect every other person. You walk up, you know, just because you want to get out. Because why should we do that? Are you saying that others who are on the queue should not be respected? But this is the kind of society that we live in. And unfortunately, the monster that we have created is haunting us now. We have to think back, you know, to have a better climb. It's really heartbreaking for me, you know, to have this conversation this morning. And I just hope that we can sit back and, you know, have a rethink about our country and what we want. For how long will we all run away and leave Nigeria? We go to this society because they have structures. I mean, these structures are respected. They have a system that's working. But the system is not operated by spirits. Human beings operate the system. 
Next on the top trending is, uh, you know, another unfortunate incident. There's been several protests following the scarcity of the Naira note, and residents of Ondo State were not left out. As that yesterday, they took out Indian numbers, I mean, they went out Indian numbers, uh, to stage a peaceful protest, <laughs> apparently. It's, it ought to be peaceful along the Ore Bini Expressway, uh, just to register their displeasure over the scarcity of the Naira notes and also the scarcity of petrol. Now, these protesters blocked very busy road, and uh, that would definitely cause uh, gridlock. Many travelers plying that particular road were stranded for several hours. At the time, it was also reported that if you were coming into Lagos uh, via road, there's no way you're going to do that because, I mean, <laughs> Lagos are rare. You can't try it. You can't even say you're going to Bini. So wherever you were, you know, very, everything, it's in chaos. It seemed like... And not to even say that, it got out of hand because it's, it became very violent and people started destroying things. And this is not what protest is about. As much as protest has been a tool that has been used in different climes by different individuals, I mean, citizens of different countries, to demand good governance, to demand policies from those who are, I mean, change of policies or to say, hey, we do not agree with this policy. This is our uh, grievances. This is what we're talking about. Protest has been used over time, and Nigerians will not be the first to use protest. But when you go out to protest, and then you engage in, you know, vandalization, or you vandalize, uh, you just go ahead, destroy things, and act irrational, then it's no longer a protest. It is a riot, because you can't even use violence to solve a problem. It's not rational. And that's why there's several conversations as to whether this protest is not political. Maybe this is the plan. You know, we talk about the issue of conspiracy. I mean, conspiracy theories are everywhere right now. And there's several school of thoughts who, who think that this is being sponsored by some political element. And if that is the case, of what good it is, why would you even allow yourself to be used by this political uh, bigwit? Because this is who they are. Why should you subject yourself to all of that? It doesn't really make any sense, right? And so if you go... Logically, one would just begin to think, if you're displeased about a thing, going to destroy the banks, going to destroy shops, and causing mayhem, and just being destructive, does that solve the problem? Does that make petrol available? Does that also bring the Naira, the new Naira note? No. You're rather causing confusion and destroying the economy that's already had. So you're making matters worse. That's exactly what's going on. And please... Let us speak to, you know, the people around us. Let's try to engage with people. We understand that tension is high at this point. People are pretty frustrated. People are angry. People are tired. But we have to be very logical. We have to be very deliberate. And if you think that you are tired with the status quo, then the best way to express your, your feelings and how you feel is that on the day of the elections, 25th of February, 11th of March, that you take your PVC and you go out there and cast your vote. That's the only way. That's really the way to express how you feel. Make sure you go out, make sure you get your friends and family to go out and cast your vote to ensure that you have a government that will take care of your interests. It's a simple. So it doesn't really make sense. And so, so to those who are out there engaging in violence and, and destroying, you know, everywhere and causing confusion, that's not acceptable. That is not protest. That's not going to yield any result. And we ask that you please desist from such practice and act. That's the much we can take on this, uh, at this point in time. On a top trending, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of the National Dinners. Please stay with us. Good morning. <laughs>